I'd like to begin the uh, first round of questions uh, with Ms. Wright. As you know, the USDA, um, since they began deregulating Roundup Ready corn, soy, and cotton, among other genetically engineered herbicide resistant crops in the late 1990s, wheat scientists estimate that there are up to 11 million acres of American farmland and a dozen species of weeds that have evolved to be resistant to Roundup herbicide. The result for farmers has been greatly increased cost of weed management and the probable loss of Roundup as an efficacious weed control chemical in large parts of the country. Is it the position of the USDA that it could not regulate genetically engineered herbicide resistant crops in order to prevent the spread of herbicide resistant weeds? Mr. Chairman, USDA recognizes the development of herbicide-resistant weeds um, across the board. Um, this is what does that mean? It means it's a, we recognize it as probably the number one issue for farmers and ranchers, whether they're raising crops using biotechnology or, or organic um, or conventional seed. I think um, we have a number of ways that we're looking at this through our um, active and dedicated research programs that are looking at critical national priorities like um, the sustainable production of um, bioenergy, climate change, um, global food security. We continue to, to see this issue as critical to farmers' bottom line. Um, and right now, um, we have confidence in a science-based process that regulates in and around our plant protection authorities. Our statutory commitments are to that act. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, that, that's very interesting, but the question that I ask, is it your position that the USDA could not regulate genetically engineered herbicide-resistant crops in order to prevent the spread of herbicide-resistant weeds? That's correct. Our statutory authority allows us to make regulatory decisions based on plant pest risk. Tell me more about that. Well, the, uh, what I can tell you is that um, the plant pest risk is determined by, um, well, and I'm going to let... Well, you know, let, let me go to Mr. Jones a minute. Uh, Mr. Jones, the EPA has taken a different position. EPA believed that it could regulate one genetically engineered plant variety in particular, those containing the BT or Bacillus thuringiensis gene in order to prevent the development of pest resistance to BT. Is that correct? That's correct. We're operating under a different statute, in this case, uh, BIFRA. Now, Mr. Jones, I understand the EPA has been regulating BT crops to prevent to prevent pest resistance for about 15 years. Is there a problem of BT resistance in this country comparable to the problem of Roundup resistance in weeds? There is there, not. Pardon? No, no there is not. Are there 11 million acres of BT resistant farmland right now? We're not aware of resistance yet. How many, how many acres of American farmland have been infested with BT resistant pests? We're not aware of any. I mean, there isn't some. It, well, is BT still an efficacious uh, pesticide in the United States? It is. Does it concern EPA to learn that weed resistance to Roundup is now widely prevalent? Yes, it does. It, well, if so, why? The glyphosate Roundup is, um, has a very favorable, as you mentioned in your opening remarks, environmental profile. And so it's a compound that um, we think it's in the interests of the environment to have a long commercial life. So you're saying that it's because the uh, glyphosate is relatively benign. Is that what you're saying? It has a very favorable environmental profile. <laughs> okay, okay, Miss Miss Wright. Uh, 11 million acres of infested farmland. One billion dollars in added weed control costs to farmers 
the loss of efficacy for a relatively benign pesticide in many places. These are some of the consequences of the USDA's position that it could not regulate Roundup Ready crops to prevent the evolution of resistant weeds. Now, Ms. Wright, you say in your written testimony, quote, there must be a plant pest risk to deny a full deregulation and herbicide resistance does not constitute a plant pest risk, unquote. I'm questioning your legal interpretation as to whether it's well-founded. Your position is that the sum total of the USDA's authority derives from Section 411 of the Plant Protection Act, which gives the Secretary authority to prevent the introduction of plant pests. But that is not the sum total. The very next section of the Act, Section 412, covers your authority to prevent the spread of, quote, noxious weeds, unquote. Section 412 gives the Secretary authority to prohibit or restrict the movement of any plant if the Secretary determines that the prohibition or restriction is necessary to prevent the dissemination of a noxious weed within the United States, unquote, from the statute. Now, noxious weeds are defined by the statute at 7 U.S.C. section 7702 as, quote, any plant or plant product that can directly or indirectly injure or cause damage to crops or other interests of agriculture or the environment, unquote. Let's write a plain reading of Section 412 gives the Secretary the broad authority to restrict the use of Roundup-resistant crops if sound science determines that those restrictions are necessary to prevent the spread of Roundup-resistant noxious weeds. How can you come to Congress and insist that effectively that Section 412 doesn't even exist? Well, first let me say that this USDA is very committed to um, looking at all of our programs and policies and ensuring that they're um, there for all forms of agriculture. I, I know you're not, this is your first time before a committee. It is. And, and, I, <laughs> and I do appreciate you being here. I asked you a question and I'd like an answer that was not responsive. We interpret our existi existing authorities as those focused on plant pest risk. Back in March of 2009, we issued a set of updates to our rules and regulations that expanded our authorities into the Noxious Weed Act. We're now looking at 66,000 comments on those rule updates. This is a new administration. We'll be taking a close look at the full range of comments that came in and in be looking very uh, carefully at uh, where our you, authorities are. are. Are you familiar with Section 412 of the Act? No, sir. You're, you're really not? Before the end of this hearing, I'd like staff to uh, have a copy made of four, Section 412 of the Act and provide it to the witness because if uh, the regulatory agency is not fully familiar with the extent of its authority, it may be one of the difficulties we're having here. I think the agency is probably very familiar, but I personally am not. I'm sorry. Well, I can understand that it's a new administration and that you're new and you do have a very good reputation where you come from. Uh, but I think it's important that uh, you become familiarized with the Act and with the sections that uh, uh, that I've articulated, particularly Section 412, which actually does change the role of your agency and your office to effectively regulate herbicide-resistant weeds. I mean, if, if you, you know, I'll take you at your word that you're not 
familiar with it. But um, um, what I gleaned from that, since you, ha you are not familiar with it, you can't point to any pr provision of the Plant Protection Act that would deny the USDA the ability to use the authority of the section to prevent the spread of Roundup resistant weeds. I think it's clear from your testimony that the USDA's position is not so much a legal judgment as it's a statement of policy. And that it's been the policy of the USDA not to use the authority that it does have under Section 412. Just very clear. I just want to make this statement to you as uh, the, the chairman of this oversight subcommittee uh, that it's, it's that a plain reading of Section 412 um, makes it obvious that if the agency wants to become involved in the enforcement of uh, herbicide resistant weeds, that it could do it. That you do have the statutory authority to do it. And that it's a policy question. Now, you may not be the person who makes the final call on that. Uh, but somebody uh, all the way up to the ladder at agriculture is making that call. And this subcommittee is determined to see the statute enforced. Um, now, Ms. Wright, I know that the department understands at this point that the problem of super weeds is a crisis. What I don't understand and what defies comprehension is this, that the department does have the legal ability to help farmers deal with the crisis and to prevent it from worsening and that the USDA has not made a policy a decision to use this authority or has made a policy decision not to use it. Do you have any, uh, anything further that you can tell the subcommittee? I, I, you, you will read the statute. Thank you. Um, yes, I, I promise to fully read the statute. And I, I would like to say, um, and thank you for the opportunity, that to address this problem and to address the, the entire issue of coexistence, uh, we're going to have to have a full slate of partners at the table looking in the, at this, including Congress, as well as um, technical service providers, other federal agencies, um, regulated entities, and public interest groups. And together, I think, we'll be able to, um, to solve this problem, including growers. It's not um, one that, ex as well as the markets, it's not one that exclusively rests on our shoulders.